you know, I, I love the thought that there is limitless faith. You know, Luke 1 verse 37 um, says, for nothing is impossible with God. I like that with God, nothing's impossible. If you try to do life by yourself, it's going to just be hard work. But with God, nothing's impossible. You know, there's a great story in Matthew 8, in verse 5. If you're a Christian, you can open your Bible. Otherwise, you can look on the screen, and, um, and they'll help you out. Now, it says in Matthew 8, verse 5, it says, Now, when Jesus came to Capraham, a centurion came with him, pleading, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And aren't there so many people like that, tormented in their mind, tormented in their spirit, wondering how they're going to get fixed? Not only is this guy physically sick, but his mind is filled with torment. Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. (laughs) I love that he would do that. And the centurion answered, Lord, I'm not worthy you'd come under my roof. But speak a word. Everybody say, speak a word. And my servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. I say to this one, go, and he goes. To another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. (laughs) And he said to those who followed, Surely I say to you, I have not found so much great faith, not even in Israel. Let's just jump down to 13. And he said, And Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, as you have believed. Everybody say, believed. As you've believed, so it will be done for you. And his servant was healed that very hour. You know, I love that God is, he is for us. That God is actually for us. I like that he was, you know, not waiting around. You know, in verse 7 it says, Jesus says, I will come and heal him. There wasn't a hesitation. I said in the, in the very beginning, I love that verse in Isaiah where it says, by his stripes we're healed. If you were just to think about that for a minute, the great lengths that God has gone for us for our healing. He wants you to be healed more than you want to be healed. He wants salvation to come into your life more than you even realize. He went to massive lengths for us. God wants us to win. He wants us to be blessed. But, you know, so why is this struggle? Why is there so much wrestling around this area of the miraculous. Well, we've got to understand that there is an enemy. You have to fight for your miracles sometimes. You know, John 10, 10 says, the thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. But God reaffirms himself and he says, but I am for you. He says, I've come that you would have life and life more abundantly. The devil, I can tell you right now, does not want your marriage to be healed today. He does not want healing to come into your life. And most of all, he does not want you to be authentic in your Christianity. He does not want you to become a Christian. There is a fight for your healing. A thousand voices coming around your life, but not today, friend. You tell the devil, no, today's about me, my life, my miracle. Something's gonna change for me. If God is for me, who can be against me? Come on, give God a clap. I like somebody clapping. (laughs) That's good. You know, I love that the man, the centurion, had the revelation. Listen to this. The centurion answered and he says, Lord, I'm not worthy you come into my roof. But speak a word (laughs) and my servant will be healed. Oh, my gosh. I mean, if I, listen, listen. If I was a dad, I'm a dad. I've got two boys, a 13-year-old and an 11-year-old. And if one of them was sick in hospital and a big time speaker like Pastor Holly was coming to my church, coming into my house and and Pastor Philip and I said, would you guys come and and pray for my son? Knowing if they came, something would happen. Knowing if they came, they would be healed. And they agreed, they said, we're gonna come, Andrew. I would be so happy. Honestly, I would, I would, you know, open the door for them in the car, get a, get a nice coffee from Starbucks, and, and I'd be driving them, knowing, knowing something's turning, a miracle's going to happen. But this guy's crazy. This guy says, 
oh, my servant whom I love, if you were just to speak a word, he's going to be healed. I mean, why would he say it? Why wouldn't he just say, yeah, Jesus, come? Oh, I think he knew. In Genesis 1 verse 3, where it says, and let there be light, and there was. Somehow he joined the dots. Somehow he knew that the same God who was in heaven, speaking a word, creating the universe into being, is now the same God standing in front of him. Somehow he knew, (laughs) somehow he knew that God was real. All of a sudden, he knew that God, come on church, was big enough to do it with a word. If he could say it in heaven, the same word is going to work on earth. He had a revelation of who he was. And look at this. Now there's limitless faith. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. Oh, I like it, I like it, I like it. I mean, it's not often you kind of like trick God, you know, like stump God, like he's, he's doing jeopardy. He doesn't, no, I don't know the answer. No, he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't know what's happening. He's pondering, thinking, pausing, something is shifting now. You know, before this moment, Jesus had to be in the room for healing to take place. He had to put his hand on somebody. But now, this guy is saying a word's enough. Now, there's no limit on me. He went to a town, his hometown, and he tried to do miracles. It was said of him that he couldn't because there was no honor, no belief. But now, a man is saying, a word's enough. And how amazing is that? For the first time, I reckon he would have been calling the angels down, saying, guys, he knows. The centurion knows who I am. You know, one of the worship team could join me. I know it's quick, but I've got to go. I've got to, we've got to go. It says this, Matthew 8, verse 13. <laughs> and the centurion said, and Jesus said to the centurion, as you have believed, as you've believed, everybody say believed. Who believed? He believed. As the centurion believed. Jesus didn't say a word was enough. The centurion is pulling on something. Jesus didn't make it that way. Who believed? He believed. He said, God, if you just say it, it's going to happen. Jesus said of him, there was nobody with more faith. Nobody else knew what he knew. The disciples, nobody. He actually had the revelation. Let me just drop this thought into you. You know, the woman who had bleeding for 12 years, Famous story, 8 verse 44, she she came up behind him, (laughs) touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately the bleeding had stopped. Who touched me? (laughs) Jesus asked. They all denied it. Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, somebody touched me. And I know that power has gone out from me. The woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet in the presence of all the people. She told him why she had touched him and now how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, daughter, your faith, your belief has healed you. Oh my gosh, it's ridiculous. Um, I just just love that thought. 12 years of bleeding. She was unclean. She was not to be in the crowd. 
not to talk to a rabbi. N never would he be allowed to speak to her. Never would he be allowed to put his hand on her. It wouldn't have been kosher for him to do it. So she decided, if I can just touch his cloak, if I could just get and touch, not even him, but a cloak, that might be enough. He would have never talked to her. He wasn't allowed to. But she decided a touch of a cloak might be enough. You haven't got it yet. All right. One more, one more, one more. Then we'll get going. Okay. Acts 5 verse 15. As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on their beds and mats so that at least... At least Peter's shadow might fall on them as they passed by. Crowds gathered from around the town of Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits, and all were healed. <laughs> oh, I like that. You can you imagine Peter waking up that day going, oh, feels good. Shadow. <laughs> You are looking good. I mean, shadow, me and you, oh, we're going to do some business today. There's a healing anointing on me. Shadow, is that what happened? No, I'm telling you that did not happen. As he was walking down the street, there were people there, cripples. Now Jesus has passed on. The Holy Spirit has become available for us. These people could never get to Jesus. There is never going to be a word, a touch, a garment. This can't happen. But perhaps somebody who'd been under a shadow for the last three years, perhaps somebody anointed, perhaps they could do something. Hurricane as Peter was walking down the street that day. The cripples. Could you imagine the first person? First person, he, he, can't, he can't touch Peter. He's too far away, but it's three o'clock in the afternoon where the shadow was longest. And he reached out and touched a shadow, screaming to his friends. My legs are healed. The next person reaching out. Now another, another, another. And all were healed. Every single one. Friend, who decided? Who decided a shadow was enough? It was the sick. Something inside of them. They were desperate, hungry, knowing that something could turn. As you look through your Bible many, many times, the people decided. Friend, isn't it true that we need miracles? We mean miracles, but there's something inside of us our belief is so important. You know, I often think it's, it's interesting how we, we want the God of miracles to heal us, but we don't know Him. It's a little bit awkward, isn't it? That we want God to do the miracle, but we refuse to live for Him. We refuse to have a relationship with Him. I mean, it's odd. That's why I love that verse where it says, I lift up my eyes to the Lord because this is where my help comes from. The truth being, if I could lift for you, I would do it. And in a sense, that's what a sermon is trying to do, to get us to believe again that God is real. And before we pray for miracles, 
can we just address that thought, the condition of our soul? That we're in relationship with God so He can avail Himself to us in a really full manner. You know, tonight, as Pastor said, we are going to believe for miracles. We're going to seek healings on the stage. Things that you've never seen before. I honestly believe that with all my heart. But God can do a miracle today. Healing can come into your life today. So in a moment, I'm going to ask you to do this one thing. I do a lot. I ask people to do this a lot. And I'm going to explain what's going to happen so you don't feel tricked in any way. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes because I reckon when you close your eyes, not now, but in a moment, isn't it true that everything disappears? But your soul and your thoughts are illuminated. And I want you to ask this question to your soul. Am I in relationship with God? I reckon it's an honest prayer. It's not manipulative. That's just you and God talking. You know, it's funny because I know as soon as you do that, God will speak. There may not be like an audible voice from heaven, but certainly there would be a stirring, a prompting in your spirit. And I want you to respond to that. There will be a knowing. It's funny, as you talk to God, don't be surprised there'll be another voice. Why? Because the Bible says the devil doesn't want you to win. There's a contention for your miracle, for your marriage, for your healing. But you tell the devil, not today. Today's about me, my life, my miracle. Something's going to shift for me. And push through. Give God this moment. It's your, what you believe. As you ponder that thought, I'm going to pray for you. At the end of the prayer, just where you said it, if you want to be included in a prayer asking Christ to come into your life or rededicate your life to the Lord, I'm going to ask you to put up your hand. I'll see it in the balcony down the floor. Then all together, we're going to pray a prayer out loud so you don't feel alone or embarrassed. But I'm believing that prayer is going to change your world, change your life and change your eternity. So come on, right now, why don't we just close your eyes? Even for some people, just to do that is like a, like a pretty new thing. But you can do it. You've come this far. Just ask that question to your soul. Am I in relationship with God? Friend, when's the last time you're honest? Where's the last time you looked in your mirror and actually faced up to where you're at? Come on, let me pray for you. God, I thank you for those people who are here for the first time maybe second time visiting from another church, or you come and go to this church, but if you're honest, you're saying, Andrew, it's true. I'm, I know about God, but I'm not really in relationship with Him. But something has to turn. Something has to shift for me. You know, I was up early praying for you, friend. And I felt like God said to me, there are numerous people here that are saying, I cannot have another year like last year. Something has to turn. This cannot be my forever. And you know it's because you're out of relationship with God. But today, you can come back. Maybe you're here and you're saying, Andrew, you know what? It is sin. Sin that separated me, a wrong relationship. Perhaps a secret sin that nobody else would know about. But you know it's separating you from God. And you're saying, Andrew, I need to come clean today. Or you say, Andrew, you know what? If I was to face death like you had to as a teenager. If I was to walk out of Oasis Church and get hit by a car, Stand before God. I don't know if I'd be in heaven or hell. There'd be a fear and uncertainty around that moment. But would you pray with me so I can walk in that relationship? Know God, have assurance of my salvation. Come on, friend, if that's you, you're in that place right now. You say, Andrew, I need to ask God to come into my life. I want you to just lift up your hand just right now. I'll see it. I ask you to put it down. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you on the belt. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, many hands. Who else is saying, Andrew, that's me? Thank you, friend, thank you. Who else is saying, Andrew, that's me? Something has to turn. Something has to change. You know, the psalm says, I lift up my eyes to the Lord. What does a lift look like? It looks like you're lifting your hands just right now, saying, Andrew, that's me. I need to pray a prayer, asking Christ to come into my life, rededicating my life to the Lord. Come on, who else is saying, Andrew, that's me? Maybe you're thinking, should I, shouldn't I? <laughs> Friend, how do you think the devil's going to come? Do you think he's going to stand before you holding in a red suit holding a pitchfork? <laughs> no, that's not how it's going to work. 
He's going to whisper to you. He's going to say, don't you do it. Hey, come on, friend, not today. This is the day the Lord's made. Everything's going to change. Who else today? Come on, quickly, lift your hand and say, Andrew, that's me. Thank you, thank you. More hands are going up. Thank you, thank you so much. You know, every person lifted their hand. Or maybe you didn't. Would you do me the honor of just lifting it one more time so I can see high enough? I, I, I would like to count. Why count? Well, because God counts. He says, I leave the 99, I'm looking for the one. I reckon he's celebrating every victory. Let me do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, ninety, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65. Come on, give God a big clap even for that. Isn't He good? Isn't He going to change? Amen. See that hand? God bless you. Come on. Why don't we just put our hand on our heart as we pray this prayer. Pray it out loud. Dear Lord Jesus, Come on, church, let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, this morning I'm asking you into my life as my Lord and Savior. I give you my life. I give you total control. Forgive me for any wrongs, for any sin. Because you died on a cross to take away the sin of the world. Take away my sin. God, I thank you. I thank you that I'm a child of God. In Jesus' name. And let me pray for you, God. I thank you for every person that prayed their prayer with earnest. Maybe they didn't lift their hand. But Lord, you heard. You heard. God, I pray that you'd reveal yourself as the God of miracles. Everything's about to change. Everything's about to turn around. God, we love you so much. We honor you. This is going to last for eternity. Lord, I believe that with all my heart. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give the Lord a big, big clap and thank you.